What's up, YouTube? I know that we preach all of the time how to invest in real estate without using any of your own money, and this video is going to show you how. My wife and I personally have done seven bird deals in the last year, and out of those bird deals, we have made $50,000 in spending. So wait, spend you've made zero. money? Okay. We've made money, and we've spent zero dollars of our own money. So watch this video to check out how. Boom. So as we said earlier, Cam has bought seven properties. He has several more under contract, but he has bought and completed seven different Burr deals. What is the Burr method or Burr strategy? I'm gonna to explain to you quickly, and then we're gonna talk about Cam's very first deal and put numbers to it to drive it home, have it make sense. After that, we're gonna go into more detail on how he was able to make 50 grand in his pocket on these seven Burr deals. Ready to rock? Let's do it. All right, so the Burr method stands for buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. What does that mean? We're gonna break it down now. So you buy a piece of property and you rehab a piece of property using somebody else's money, other people's money, OPM. So a private lender or a hard money lender are the main two examples. So you buy a piece of property, which you've done, you buy it and fix it up using somebody else's money. So you have somebody else's money in the deal, not your own. And then you get it rented because you need to prove so the next step, you need to prove to yourself and the bank that it is an asset and not liability that it produces cash and doesn't take cash every month. So you want to prove that it produces income. We're going to put numbers to this here in a second. So you bought it, fix it up, none of your own money. You get it rented, then you take it to a local bank. And I didn't believe this the first time I heard it, but a local bank will cut you a cashier's check for 80% of the appraised value. So, so Here's what happens. You take, you take it to a local bank and get it appraised. They write you a check for 80% of the appraised value. You take that check and you pay back your, your lender who lent you the purchase and the rehab. So they got the money back plus interest. Now you have a loan on the property because they wrote you a check. You have a mortgage on the property, but guess what? This step, we got it rented. So the tenant pays your mortgage plus all your expenses plus cash flow. And then you can repeat it as many times as you want, which Cam is going to do it about 150 times in the next three years because bank's happy because they have a note on it that's producing income for them every single month. And then your private lender, hard money lender is happy because they got their money back. So you can repeat this. Let's see if this works, Cameron, as many times as you want. Beautiful, 100%. So to drive this home, we're gonna use a real life example of how Cam on his very first Burr deal netted $13,000 in his pocket. Hopefully he remembers the numbers. Let's go. So yeah, Cam. I think, I think it was honestly a little bit more than that, but we, we bought the property for $67,000. Okay. You bought it for sixty-seven k, $67,000, and we borrowed that money from a private lender to okay. be able to purchase that. Um, and then we rehabbed the property for $27,000. All right, so twenty seven k. So total here, which I did this earlier, so you know the math for that? 94. 94, but then on top of that, we also paid back the private lender $3,000 on top of the 94,000. So they loaned us $94,000 uh, to, to purchase the property. But when we refinanced, we paid them $3,000 just for that loan. But um, so, so that, that's how we got the private money. We're, we're paying them for that. So yeah, you're paying. So we're all in on the rehab, um, the, the rehab, the buy, and paying them back, we were all in on the property for $97,000 essentially. Perfect, so up to this point, you bought it and you fix it up using the private lender's money. Up to this point, you have $94,000 of their money in. What did you do next? So we rented it out. We rented the property out for $1,500 a month. So okay. it was a great property. We did a complete rehab on it. We did uh, completely new flooring, new paint, granite countertops, new bathroom, new appliances. So we did a great rehab and we were able to get a renter in there for $1,500 a month. Okay, so you bought it at a discount. You fix it up using their money. You got it rented. Then you took it to a local bank and they appraised the property and wrote you a check for 80% of the appraised value. So the appraisal went out there. So what did it appraise? So for? they appraised it at $145,000. All righty. So you want to get your calculator out? Or you yeah, so it was $145,000. At 80% of that, we would have been able to pull out $116,000. So we would have been able to make $19,000. We decided instead of taking the full 80%, which I, I know this, a lot of people would disagree with this, 
but we decided to only take out about 76% because we could take as much or as little up to 80,000 or 80% as we wanted. And so we took about 76% out, which netted us $13,000 on the back end after we had paid back our private lender plus interest. And it was still cash flowing about $250 a month. So as you can see, Kim used somebody else's money to do everything. And then again, he used somebody else's money, the bank, to pay back this other somebody. And now has a mortgage on it that the, ten, that the tenant is paying the mortgage plus interest on. And you can repeat this damn thing because guess what? The bank's happy and your private lender's happy, right? Yeah, so, so what is amazing about this is now my wife and I, we own a house that, house that is worth $145,000 that has a tenant in it that's paying $1,500 a month we only owe 110 or so on it. So we have $35,000 in equity on that house. We have a tenant that is paying off our entire note. We're making $250, $250 a month doing absolutely nothing. And we did this all using other people's money. It is absolutely amazing. It doesn't make sense how it works. Um, and so we're just gonna do it 150 times. You're gonna do it until somebody years. says you can't exactly. do it Exactly, it, it's, it's literally, I mean, there's a lot of work involved to it. Don't get me wrong here, but it's free money. And after the work is done, then it's pretty simple because like he said, he owed, he owes this much on it. I'm not gonna write because it's upside down and it was worth this much. So he has this much in equity right off the bat. But guess what happens? Probably doesn't sleep very much because the kid's got a lot of energy, but when he does sleep and doesn't touch it, the note gets paid down by the tenant and the property goes up in value every single freaking day. Luke's and I did some math and we make $1,500 a day on debt pay down, properties increase in value and cash flow. So all those three things working together just creates and in this space is um, equity that you can tap into and you can use to borrow money against or just pull out cash. So they that's why that whole saying is landlords grow richer in their sleep because the, the property goes up in value, the tenant pays the note down and you get to keep the difference. And you cash flow a couple hundred bucks, it's, so it's, it's pretty crazy. It is amazing. I, I have some friends that are in the finance world or even the real estate world and, and they always ask me, what is my cash on cash return? And when I tell them that my cash on cash return is infinite, they are absolutely amazed. I literally have zero dollars invested in this deal. I am making $250 a month. And then on top of that, it's going to appreciate at about 3% a year. So it's gonna appreciate a couple thousand dollars a year. And the, the, the note is being paid down a couple thousand dollars a year. So my cash on cash return is, is infinite. It is absolutely amazing. It doesn't make sense. If you haven't done it before, stop what you're doing, figure out how to do it and go do it. Because all these things are working, every single thing is working in your favor. We haven't gone into the tax benefits and being able to raise rent over the years. We didn't even go into all that because we're trying to keep it simple and drive this point home. But doing the bird method and the bird strategy is the fastest and most proven way, in my opinion, to grow generational wealth. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. My wife and I, we've We've done seven burrs so far. We have another six that we're, we already own that we're in the process of refinancing out. And then we've done some flips and, and wholesaling, but um, through doing that, we've added close to $700,000 to our net worth in the last year, just by doing that alone. It's been absolutely amazing. Okay, so we just explained what the burr method or burr strategy was. Now let's dig down into why you've been able to pull out money every single time. Use other people's money to buy it and rehab it, but then at the end, you've been able to put money in your pocket, not like 20 bucks, we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars on every single deal so far. So the most important part Besides subscribing to our YouTube channel, the most important part you need to do um, is buy the property at a deep discount to make the rest of this work. Because you can't go just find your neighbor's house that's from on the same. Uh, you can't go just find your neighbor's house that's on the market in perfect condition and do the burr. That's not how this works. So talk a little bit about how you buy houses at such a big discount. Yeah, so it, it takes a lot of work to find those deals. I mean, my wife and I we drive for dollars. We look for houses that look like they're vacant, look like nobody's living there. We'll find out who lives there, we'll call them up, we'll make them an offer. Um, there's also, you you can send out postcards, you can find uh, lists of people who, who, the vacant property lists, and you send out postcards to those houses saying, hey, I wanna buy your property. We're looking for houses that actually have a lot of deferred maintenance. Uh, there, you know, the first house that we bought, there was a dead, raccoon and a dead squirrel in the house. It, it was took us three um, full-size 
uh, trash trailers uh, of stuff to, to, to clear it out. So like it was not a nice house when we bought it, but that's where we're gonna see the most profit in the long run. That's how we can add value to the houses because we got in there and we tore it all out and redid it. And so it, it, the biggest part of the Burr method is buying your house right. And how you do that is you buy your house it 80% of the ARV minus repairs. That's how what you is your, is the after repair value. So if a house is $100,000 when it's all fixed up and it needs 10 grand in your repairs, you're going to offer $70,000 on that because it's 80% of 100 minus $10,000. You're at $70,000. That way you know you're gonna burr out of it once you put $10,000 into it, you're all in for 80, you take it to your bank, it gets appraised at 100, they give you 80%, you pull all of your money out. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and so you got to buy them right though for this to work at all. You have to buy the houses right. Yep. And in order to buy houses right, Cam just gave a couple of examples. Um, driving for dollars, uh, we use the Deal Machine app. Go to the link in the bio. We have a um, free deal credits for you if you click on our link. And also, I'm um, sending direct mails another way you can do. We also have a, a link for that. So we can really help you out. The whole goal of this channel is to help you. And we can do that by connecting you with some of our resources. So check out the description for those. But I kind of want to hit on before we move to the next step is if you don't want to spend money or don't have time or don't want to drive for dollars or um, you know you don't want to spend money on marketing, you can do a lot of this for free. I mean, you probably bought in our flipping company 15 houses for free with no marketing through your connectors. And yeah. a connector is someone that comes in contact with a house that someone needs to sell quickly, either a real estate agent, a wholesaler. Um, we buy houses from um, mold remediators, from elderly law attorneys. So there's a ton of different connections that you can connect with. And you have crushed that. You've done, I think, over 15 in just the past six months of buying houses for our flipping company. Why don't you talk a little bit how you connect with people and how that conversation goes so the viewers can start to get that in their mind and when they come across these people know what to say. Yeah. There's so many connectors out there. Everywhere you go, you can find somebody that's going to connect you with somebody that is wanting to sell their house as is. They don't want to deal with real estate agents. They want to do it quick. They want to do it fast. They want their money. They want to get out of there. And they're willing to take a discount on the property to, to have it happen quick. And so you, you can find those anywhere. So how I've found my best connectors or networking leads is on Facebook. Uh, in, in any area, any community that you are in, I guarantee you there's a real estate uh, Facebook page that is directly correlated with your community. I mean, there's in St. Louis, there's probably 50 or 100 of them. And, um, yeah, and, they, and most of them have between 500 and 10,000 members. So exactly. There's, there's so, a lot in there. You're going to find people in there where you can just message them and say, hey, do you know of anybody that has a house that they're wanting to sell? Um, other ways that I have found it is that I've called property management companies and say, hey, do you have any tired landlords that just want to get rid of their properties? And I bought a, a package of seven homes by doing that. Buying is extremely important. I don't know why I have two writing utensils, but I do. Buying houses at a discount is extremely important. It's the most important part because it sets up all the other steps. If you want to know, Cam talked about a formula that we use to buy houses. Click on this video above. I go into detail how you get your max allowable offer and all the variables that go into creating your offer to buy houses at a discount. So that video after this one is done, go check that one out because that can really help you know where you need to buy the houses um, and how to buy them at, at a deep enough discount to make the Burr method work or have multiple exit strategies. So I think we beat that one pretty good. You have yeah. to buy houses at a discount in order to make the Burr method work where you have no money out of pocket or to where you get money at the end mm -hmm. of the day. So you bought a house at a discount. The next step of the Burr process or the Burr strategy is rehabbing. Talk a little bit about rehabbing, what you do when you rehab your properties. Uh, rehabbing is where we make our money on the back end. Because if we rehab it for cheap enough and well enough to get a higher appraisal than what we were expecting, that's how we're able to pull out money. And so all of our, all of our rehabs, we've actually came in under budget from that. Um, and one of the ways that we've done that is by getting good contractors, getting multiple bids, buying in bulk from Home Depot or Menards or wherever you guys shop at. Um, but we've made our money on, on our Burr, met, Burr properties from the rehab. And so my wife, she's amazing. She kind of manages the entire rehab process. And almost all of our houses, they have been completely rehabbed where we do new flooring, we do new paint, 
We do new kitchens, we do new bathrooms, we do landscaping, we replace the systems. We essentially bulletproof our house for the tenants so we know that we're not gonna have any problems in the future. But we rehab them completely um, and that, that also gives us the ability to put a renter in there it's going to pay a premium for that. You know, most of the houses and rental houses in that area are quite a bit cheaper. And that that tenant that we usually get, they're usually paying 100 to 200 dollars more than what the other rentals in the area are going for. And they're happy to pay that. So that's important. Um, a couple of things that Cam said there is when you rehab a property properly, it cuts down on your maintenance long term because you've replaced everything. You get better tenants in the property that pay more, and then you also get a higher appraisal, which is important when it comes to the bird method because you want to get your all your money back. So we bought the we talked about how to buy the property and how to rehab the property um, in order to make the bird method work and we do that using other people's money and if you want to hop, know how to find other people's money how to find private lenders click on the video above i go into a ton of detail about how we find private lenders and what to tell the private lender so that they feel comfortable doing the investment with you because these people are going to be investing in you in real estate and you um, need their money because it's extremely powerful and in that video above i talk about private lenders so yeah. the next thing you do is you get the property rented in the bird method so you are um, you need to get it rented because like i say you need to you need to prove that it produces income to the bank you're going to take it to mm -hmm. and you also want to have a tenant in there to pay all your expenses as you're holding if you if you have to hold it before you refinance yeah and you so know, how do you how do you get good tenants so we're very strict on our tenants one because we have rehabbed our houses to a really nice level of finishes to where whoever we want living there we want them to take care of what we've done and so um, we're asking for a 650 credit score, which is, I mean, I didn't even have a 650 credit score a couple years ago, so that, that's a little bit high. We're asking for three times, uh, that we want them to make three times a month what the rent is. There's no evictions um, and no felonies on their record. Um, and so, and then we host a couple open houses and have everybody get walk through there. Then we send them off uh, the, um, the uh, application in our applications we do charge for them to fill out an application and that the reason we do that is we don't want just a ton of people filling out applications and us doing all these research on them and reaching out to them and them saying well we're not interested so we want them to have a little bit of skin in the game when they fill out an application and then from there we pick our tenants uh, the rental part has actually been the longest part for us in our, in our burrs is we usually let our property sit there for a month to month and a half because we want to find the exact right tenant that is going to take care of our house. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. So basically what Cam kind of says is he has his systems and processes in order to where he properly um, gets the right tenants in by um, holding open houses and has a strict set of rules and regulations that it goes into that are required to approve a tenant because you have to there's a bunch of fair federal housing laws out there that protect rightfully so protect potential tenants so you have to make sure to treat every tenant the same and follow those rules which cam does because he all he has all the systems and processes in place so it's extremely important to vet your tenants property because one bad tenant can ruin years of cash flow which you're going to run into bad tenants every once in a while but the best thing to do to avoid that happening the least chance of that happening is to properly vet them in the first place mm -hmm. all righty so we got the property rented now you take it to a local bank now's the exciting part you got to find Fun out part. how much your house is going to appraise Love for this. so talk a little bit about how you've been able to deal with banks and how the appraisals have gone so the appraisal is what everything on the burr method relies on is you want the property to appraise uh, it 80% or more of, of what you, the cash that you have invested into it. And so my wife and I, when we call our bank, um, we say, Hey, we're done with the property. Can you send out the appraisal? They give us a time. We come up with an appraisal packet where we pull all of the comps in the area. We put together everything that we've done to the house. We show them how much money we have invested in the house. And we usually walk up to the appraiser with this packet and say, Hey, we are hoping to get X amount of money or X amount, uh, the appraisal to be X amount for this house. And most of the time he gives it around that price to us. Um, you know, so there's only been one time where he's came in significantly lower than what we've asked for. But most of the time, you know, after looking at the comps, we make it, you know, we show that the house is worth what we're asking for. But after looking at that, he gives us the appraisal that we're asking for. And we're usually asking for all of our money back plus a little bit. Yeah, well, that makes a ton of sense. So that's why you rehab the house properly and to the best necessary that's why you rehab the house 
um, reasonably and get it up to market level so that when the appraiser comes and appraises the property, it will appraise that enough so you can get all your money back. And when we run our when we run our comps on, on, on properties, we usually say worst case scenario, here's what our property would appraise for, best case scenario, here's what our property would appraise for. So we find a comp that is worst case and a comp that is best case. And we usually try and buy um, like when we run our numbers from the worst case scenario, but we try and appraise at the best case scenario. So that way we can pull money out if, because we ran our numbers on the worst case scenario, but we can get it appraised at the best case scenario. That's how we can pull money out every time. And when, when Kim just said the word copy means comparable home sales. That's what an appraiser looks at. They'll try to get three comparable home sales, houses that are in similar condition, similar age, um, same bed and bath, you know, same neighborhood, preferably, but definitely same school district. So that's what they look for, and that's what you need to look for when you're running your comps on the front end, which is your ARV, which we talked about is your after yeah. repair value. So now that you've done this, you've got your money back plus some, you can repeat it as many times as you want, right? I mean, that, that's, that's the exciting step, is being able to do this as many times as you want to reach your financial freedom goal or threshold, whatever that may be. That is the beauty about all of this is because you're not tying up your own money in these properties, you can do it again and again and again and again and again. And so my wife and I, we have Speaking done... of Lexi, stop texting me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's messed up. That's all right, keep going, I had to throw you off. Again and again. But we've done, you know, 13 uh, since the start of January. We've done 13. Um, and we're hoping to do, you know, another four or five this year. Next year, we're hoping to do 20 to 25. What's your goal? So I would love, Okay. I would love to have more than you if I, in the next five years. Um, okay. So uh, our, our original goal was to get 20 in 2020, which I think we're on track to hit that. But our, our goal was 100, in, 100 properties in five years. Actually, 107, because you got to 106 in five years. So ours it. was 107 in five years. We'd love to be there. And, and I think it's completely doable. If we do 20 homes a year, which we're going to do that in our first year, I think it's absolutely doable to have 100 plus homes in five years. If you're getting close to having more properties than I had my first five years, we'll just let you go as a buyer, and then that'll really <laughs> stunt your growth. And I'm done. Yeah, exactly. You'll fire me. So, but awesome. no, it's amazing. All right. so. Recapping what we just talked about was Cam has made over $50,000 on his first seven bird deals. He's put money in his pocket. He has used zero of his own dollars and he's made $50,000. And he's done that using the bird method or the bird strategy, which we just went over. It's extremely powerful. We talk about this kind of stuff all the time on our YouTube channel. This channel is created to actually give real content that you can actually take steps on and grow your own wealth. We're not charging for any of this stuff. It's all free. If you found this video useful at all, we had this video above where Lucas and I sit right there in that corner over there and we talk about everything you need to know to buy your first rental property without using any of our own money. We talk about the Burr method, but we go into a ton of detail and every single step you could do, it's over an hour long. So there's a ton of great content. It's how to buy your first rental property webinar. There's a ton of value there. So the video is above. Go check that out if you're at all interested in getting the rental properties. But we're just trying to provide as much value as we can. And these are actually actionable steps that people pay money to learn. And we're giving it for free. So the fact that we're doing it for free, all we ask for is you to subscribe and comment. Subscribe. Our video. subscribe to this channel, comment on our videos. The stupid algorithm loves comment. So please just comment on this video. Let us know what you think about Cam's mustache. Let us know if you've done a bird deal. Let us know your favorite day of the week. I don't really care, but please just comment on this video. It'd really help. And I'm the one that personally answers all the questions. I would love to interact with you and give you feedback and help in any way I can. Oh, oh here we go. He gets nervous about the hooks. But no, I do not. I'm yes. so good at the hooks. What's up, YouTube? All right. Mine was better, but we'll no. Yeah. All right. It's okay. not, it wasn't. It's fine. But it was. Okay. Do you want to do it again? Do you want, do you want me to do one more? That was well, good. That wasn't that good. So. Um, yeah, all right. Is better. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. It's money. What is money? Money. 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 I'm in love with money. We drive around and we look for old houses that are. <coughs> oh. Retake. Retake. <laughs>